Today, I'm going to talk about how not to keep Christmas. You might say, aren't we supposed to keep Christmas? Well, the answer is no. I have given several messages and written blogs about why we should not keep Christmas. So you can go ahead and check the description box for these helpful and eye-opening resources. I also offer a free Bible study guide entitled, The Great Christmas Hoax. In this guide, you'll learn the dark history of Christmas, why you should not celebrate Christmas, and the proper and right way of worshiping God. So go ahead and request your free copy by clicking the link in the description box. For now, this presentation will give you practical tips on how you can avoid this pagan celebration which God forbids us to take part in. I believe this is timely message, especially now that we are in the month of December. The Bible tells us that we are not of this world, but we are in the world. So sooner or later, we will encounter certain situations that could make us compromise our biblical principles or situations that need a higher level of godly wisdom so that we can make better decisions. For this reason, I would like to give you some scenarios and questions that you may encounter and what would be the biblical response or actions that we should take. So let's start with the basics. As true followers of Yahshua, we should not actively participate in any Christmas-themed activities. That includes Christmas parties, exchanging gifts, and caroling. You also don't greet others Merry Christmas or decorate your house with Christmas decors. But what if someone greeted you with Merry Christmas or Happy New Year? What should you say? Usually, you can just smile to acknowledge the greeting. Sometimes, explaining our beliefs to a stranger might not be the most productive thing to do unless there's a genuine interest in knowing more about our beliefs. However, if this is someone you know, you can respond by saying, Oh, we don't celebrate Christmas. That way, people would know where we stand. Now let's go to school. You need to explain to your children that we don't celebrate Christmas. They should have a basic knowledge that Jesus Christ or Yahshua the Messiah wasn't born on December 25 and that Christmas has pagan roots. Now usually some teachers would ask their students to donate Christmas decorations or even ask their students to make one as their project. You would most likely make Christmas trees, lanterns, and others. Explain to your child that they should respectfully decline and ask for a different project. Most importantly, you as the parent should, should proactively talk to their teacher and explain where you stand in regards to Christmas. Now at work, it can also be tricky and you'll be pressured to keep Christmas. In the past, companies would have Christmas parties that would include everyone. Because of the growing sensitivities of people's religious and secular beliefs, they would not call it Christmas parties anymore but year-end gatherings or year-end parties. Since it is not called the Christmas party anymore, can we now join? Well, it is basically a dog with a different color. You see, a dog remains to be a dog even if it changed its name tag. In the same manner, year-end gatherings are still Christmas parties. You'll notice that they will have Christmas themed decorations, exchanging gifts, and even Christmas songs playing the background. So don't be fooled. Satan would sometimes trick you into celebrating Christmas. Another aspect that you should consider is the Christmas bonus. In the Philippines, the Christmas bonus is actually the 13th month of pay that is a statutory annual employee benefit based on the presidential decree number 851 of 1975. Because of the timing, some mistakenly called it a Christmas bonus. Now aside from 13th month pay, your company might have performance bonuses that again, they would call Christmas bonus. This is based on your performance and it is not because of Christmas that you are being given this. Thus, it is okay for us to receive these bonuses. Now let's talk about family gatherings. Filipinos are known for a close, knit family tie. Part of our tradition is gathering together on Christmas Eve. I experienced that as a child and it was really a fun and wonderful experience. We have families gathered together, we have gifts for everyone, we have fun games, we have fireworks. Everyone is in good mood and no one should spoil the moment in the name of Christmas. 
So it is really enticing and tempting to be with your family and friends during Christmas. However, let's not forget that's exactly the evil tactic of Satan to make Christmas as attractive as possible to blind them to the truth. What should you do if you're invited to join your family on Christmas Eve? We should do our part. Normally, we should have already told our family about our beliefs long before Christmas. So they should respect your decision. Let them know that you appreciate their love and care, but you just couldn't keep Christmas in good conscience anymore. But here's the tricky part. Sometimes they will tell you that it is just a meal eaten together and there's no Christmas involved. Again, be very careful. Use sound judgment and godly wisdom. Looking back in the past, did they keep their word? They will tell you that it's just a family gathering and then all of a sudden, there's exchanging gifts already. They're singing Christmas songs and then that's the time you should know it is better to respectfully decline the invitation. The mere fact that it is on December 24, you know it's going to be about Christmas. I know of someone who goes outside of their home on Christmas Eve to avoid Christmas celebration of their family. Now it depends on your situation and what is possible, but you should look for the best way for you to avoid Christmas celebrations. How about receiving gifts? Should we accept them? Obviously, we shouldn't participate in exchanging gifts. However, what if someone gives you a gift? You can respectfully decline and explain that you don't celebrate Christmas. However, if that person explains that they are giving the gift as a sign of their love for you, then that's okay. Given that that person knows that you are accepting the gift not for Christmas but simply a gift like a gift given in any time of the year. If possible, you can explain to that person to reserve the gift and give it after the Christmas season and please don't wrap it in Christmas wrappings. Now giving donations. Let's talk about giving alms. In our city, we normally see people from rural areas going house to house asking for Christmas gifts or what they call pamasko. They would accept used clothing, bags, food, or any donations. Sometimes they will ask for money. Should you give them anything? Generally speaking, the answer is it is better not to give. The reason is that it is Christmas season. If we do something good but the timing is wrong, then it becomes an appearance of evil. Not only that, but we are encouraging these people to become beggars when they are not supposed to be like that. Moreover, the Bible tells us that we should prioritize helping our families and brethren first. Then we should do good to all when we have the opportunity and Yahshua said to give to those who ask. That's why this is really a tricky situation. In this case, let us remember the weightier matter of the law, which is justice, mercy, and faith as mentioned in Matthew 23 verse 23. Let the Holy Spirit guide you in making the right decision. If you think giving them something encourages them to depend on others rather than find a better job, then in this case, not giving them anything might be the best way to help. How about those singing Christmas carols in our house? The answer is we don't give and we certainly should stop them from singing in front of our house. To end this message, I would like to share with you three important principles to remember as we go through this Christmas season. Number one, go as far away from Christmas as possible. We read in Revelation 18 verse 4, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and lest you receive her plagues. As believers, our focus should be on distancing ourselves from Christmas celebrations rather than testing the limits. Instead of pushing the boundaries and attempting to gauge how closely we can align with Christmas festivities without crossing into sinful territory, we should strive to maintain a clear separation. Again, we must go as far away from Christmas as possible and not go as near as possible to Christmas without sinning. Number two, pray for godly wisdom. James 1 verse 5 tells us, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. There are different scenarios and situations that we haven't discussed in this message. 
and it is impossible to cover them all. Each situation presents unique aspects. That's where wisdom comes in. Pray that God will help you make the right decisions. Don't rely on your own knowledge. Let God direct you. Number three, follow your good conscience. I specifically mentioned good conscience because there are consciences that are not based on God's truth. For example, 1 Timothy 1 verse 19 tells us about having a good conscience. So not all consciences are the same. Strive to have this type of good conscience by studying God's word in determining what's good and acceptable to our Father. Once you have that good conscience, we need to follow what the Apostle Paul mentioned in Acts 24 verse 16. I myself always strive to have a conscience without offense toward God and men. We must strive to have a conscience without offense toward God and men. This means that if our conscience is bothering us, if there's even a small hint of you feeling uncomfortable or that you suspect that you're putting yourself in a compromising situation, then it is better not to violate your conscience. It could be the Holy Spirit telling you that it's better not to proceed with the decision you're about to make. With that, I hope you have a better understanding of how we should not keep Christmas. This is not simply about celebrating Christmas, but it is a matter of following Yahweh and putting Him first in our lives. You see, God is so important to us that even the celebrations we partake in should be in alignment with this will. Please don't forget the free Bible study guide we offer today, The Great Christmas Hoax. This guide is free and you have nothing to lose but you have a lot to gain. So please proceed and go to the description box and find the link. With that, my sincerest hope is that the Holy Spirit will guide us all and help us make the right decisions in our lives. Hello friends, I need your help. If it is not too much to ask, please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. This should only take 5 seconds of your time, but this simple gesture would help me reach more people and share the word of God with the rest of the world. You have the power to make a difference in people's lives.